Exhausted from their encounter with the troll, Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to the Gryffindor common room and discussed the strange goings-on at Hogwarts. Harry suspected that someone had released the troll to distract everyone so that they could get into the Forbidden Corridor. But there wasn't much time to think about who was behind this, especially since Harry was busy preparing for the second Quidditch match against Ravenclaw. All right, here we go. Oh, what the Welcome fuck? Look at this shit. Okay, the developers did this on purpose for shits and giggles. It can't keep glitching up that way that many times by accident. It's Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw. Let's play Quidditch. There's the snitch. Do they really fit the entire school population in those 12 thin towers? You're gonna... I don't even know how many students there are. Uh... You can fit several dozen on tower, I guess, yeah. Now, I don't particularly enjoy flying broomsticks in this game, just because the control is so weird, but... It just... Oh my god, I look like an idiot. Let's get this over with. He turns and misses, indeed. I don't know about other people that have played the PC version of this game, but I just find it... I mean, I keep saying it over and over again, it's just so difficult to control the broom, or... or a lot of other things in this game, really, with very much precision, aiming your wand and such. Now, can you imagine if the real Harry Potter heard, Don't give up now, from the commentator. What a... Why would you say that? Why would he give up? Just, I don't know. I don't know how much there is to say in a Quidditch game when you're playing as a Seeker and that's all you're focused on and can see. And I hate how I keep zigzagging up and down and left and right all the time, but the snitch just moves out of the way a little bit, and it's not like you can make subtle movements to change course only by a slight amount, especially when you're trying to move at a faster speed. Oh, good, uh, and that's the other thing, I don't know what to do other than just click rapidly and hope for the best there. And now I, now I lost the snitch, I don't even know where it is. At least I don't have to look for a tiny glint of gold though, just a brightly colored stream of sparks or whatever the damn thing farts out as it flies along. I hate this. I should be enjoying it, though. Now, I wonder how long it would take the opponent to capture the snitch if I just sat around and, and did nothing. You know, just waiting for the computer to decide it's finally allowed to beat me. I don't feel like finding out. And I just realized that I have pretty low health now. I'm not sure if I'll survive another hit with, from a bludger or not. Good flying skills. Ravenclaw Seeker. Where you keep hanging on to your broom by your hands like that. I don't get it. Why? Uh, who cares? I realize that at some point the game's lines of pre recorded dialogue will inevitably need to be repeated since you can't store an infinite number of different possible sentences that Lee Jordan can speak, but. Could the game at least try not to reuse the same line twice in a time span of under a minute? And if people like McGonagall are worried about objectivity, why have a student narrate the game in the first place? Surely a staff member could do it just as fine. <sighs> just, please let this be over. I, I hate just... I, oh, finally got it. Good. Nearly spent like four minutes on this. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks to Harry's skill as a seeker, Gryffindor won the Quidditch match against Ravenclaw. Harry, Ron, and Hermione spent most of their free time in Hagrid's hut, trying to convince him that he couldn't keep Norbert his beloved dragon. Eventually, after much coaxing, Hagrid agreed. Harry unwrapped 
with the unexpected Christmas present. Why would you show a shot of the window? I mean, uh. it's an invisibility cloak, said Ron. They're very rare. There was a note with the cloak. Your father left this in my possession, Harry read. Use it well. A very Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep Norbert there. I mean, temporarily, of course, but still. Be careful, Harry, said Hermione. You can't stay invisible while you cast spells. Filch might see you. With Norbert safely bundled up, Harry set off for the tallest tower. He hoped that the cloak would conceal him from Filch and his cat, Mrs. Norris. Oh, shit. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So they made Filch sound more goofy and less intimidating in the game compared to the movie. Or at least this first impression did. This is the first time we see Filch in this game, right? If I'm wrong about that, I'll be mad at myself. Okay, coming around. Just wait and back myself up into this corner here. Yeah. Now I should be able to go when he goes around that bookshelf. No! God damn, are you fucking for real? How the fuck do I keep forgetting which mouse button uses the wand and which mouse button jumps? Okay, I still have a chance here. Oh my god. I am so sick and tired of this game's pickiness when it comes to aiming. Just... If the fucking spell icon shows up, it should fucking count. Why does this need to be more difficult than that? My god, man, just... Uh, see? Right there. Literally aiming directly at the lock and nothing happens. Oh, okay, great. Figures he'd keep following me around like that. Now, I do like how the game went about this whole section with the invisibility cloak. Other than spending half of a cutscene staring at a goddamn opaque window as Harry literally opened his Christmas present that had the cloak in it, of course. <sighs> Once again, foiled by the edge of a wooden bookcase. Good thing that spell didn't topple the whole bookcase over as the spell grazed it. Can I just run right past him? No one gets past Argus Filch and makes a fool of him. Oops. Good thing I touched the save book. But yeah, having Harry transparent to signify that he's hidden by the cloak and making him vulnerable as he casts spells with Filch lurking around seems to be a more interesting part of the various methods of gameplay this game has to offer, in my opinion. Now, I just gotta figure this out. Let's see here. Hmm... No, I have no idea if moving in tiny steps keeps me safe or not, but it's worth a try, I guess. Okay, right there was a staircase there. Although that might just lead me to a few beans, and at this point I really don't care to go out of my way very much to collect them anymore. Oh my god, listen to this guy. <laughs> Where is he? Pray I don't find you, my stealthy little student. Ah, oh, shit, now he's coming this way. Holy fuck. Oh, okay, I'm good. But does he not know the staircase is here? How does he know that whatever he's chasing didn't retreat up the top of the bookcases? And like I said, I don't feel like spending more time getting beans in addition to spending time completing the main objective at hand. If Fred and George need more and they 
always seem to ask for 25 at a time, then I'm, I'll be in good supply for a while. Well, I'm glad there's an abundance of save books around here, although that makes sense since this is a library after all, but it also means Madame Prince doesn't check to see if her own place is cleaned up after hours. There he is. I thought he was around here somewhere. Oh, now I have to cast Flipendo at a bookshelf. That's gonna... That's gonna knock it over, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, I love those noises he makes. It's great. Anything this way? There's a whole side of the room I would otherwise have to bypass. Why does the spell need to hit the center of the door instead of the lock? Shit, shit, shit. No. God damn it, now he's really getting agitated. And sure, aiming at the center of the door gives you a larger target to aim at, and they were probably thinking that's easier for the player. Okay, that's fine, but... When I actually have it aimed at the lock like I did earlier, then it should still fucking count. Now, how can I get up there? Do you really need to ask? I know I fucked around during the potions episode, but I think I know how I'm supposed to get up on the top of the bookshelves now. <coughs> yeah, that was stupid. I have no idea if he'll notice me if I jump over him or not. Should be safe now. Could you not grunt when you land? I mean, just... I thought secrecy was your the whole point of this, Harry. Come on. Just learn to be quiet. What the fuck did I just fucking tell you? God damn it, shut up! I love that so much. That'll never get old. It's great. I can't... Can't go in there yet. I swear to God, Harry. Wait, why didn't I just drop down earlier? I don't have to walk back down the tilted bookshelf, necessarily. Hell, I can probably unlock this room from here in a few seconds. Yep. Good job. Oh, come on. Just get the fuck out of the way. Just because you make funny noises doesn't mean I won't get impatient with you. Uh. Uh. Where is he? Pray I don't find you, my stealthy little student. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? I literally just told myself I didn't need to go back down the bookshelf again, and I totally forgot only just mere seconds later. Okay, back up we go again. Any second now. Soon enough. I can probably outrun him if I go around the long way here. I 
guess he's hard of hearing. Filch doesn't seem to hear here his grunts. Or that. Come on. Is there anything behind me? No, okay. I'll catch you, and when I do, you'll regret it. You already caught me once, and I got to try again, so I'm not too worried. Uh, fuck it, I'll use the bookshelf again, though. I hate having to run back and forth, though. I have to go up the bookshelf and into that room again, and... Was I exposed for the entirety of that cutscene? Damn. Actually, I don't even know if that technically counts as a cutscene or not, but the camera certainly cuts away to show something else. Cool, more platforms made out of a solid structure of photons. Why can't all the ceilings in the wizarding world just use a layer of this to illuminate rooms instead of candles or torches? Those traditional fire-based light sources just seem to provide so much less light than a whole panel of stationary Lumos-powered photons, and presumably you'd have less flickering too. And speaking of light, how can Harry see out of an invisibility cloak anyways? Light from the outside world would need to reach his eyes. But in order to remain invisible, the light would have to curve around his body and reform on the other side of him. A common analogy to this is having a rock sticking out above the surface of a flowing river where the water just goes around either side and, if you're downstream, you can't tell that the water was blocked by anything because it simply went around the rock and reformed as it was. There are metamaterials that have been developed in laboratories that do this to some extent, maybe not with the visible light portion of electromagnetic radiation that we can see with our eyes necessarily. I'm not sure. But who cares? Magic, right? Now, if I learned of this world, I would love to study the science behind all this power. It either has to obey the same sort of physical laws that we abide by in the Muggle world, and use large amounts of energy to achieve all these things, or magic has to exploit some sort of loopholes in the laws of physics in some way. But either way, you would still expect the scientific method to apply when attempting to study the underlying phenomenon known as magic, and I think that would be one of the most fascinating things ever to discover, if such a discovery could be made by muggle scientists in the first place. I wonder how much the wizarding world's body of knowledge even knows about the underlying reasons behind this power, or if they just only know how to use it. Forget explaining the Muggle world to people like Arthur Weasley. If I got to talk to him, I'd want to know how magic even happens in the first place. Because it's not like people bullshit this. All the magic is demonstrable on demand and can be tested to show that it's not some hoax. It's reproducible. So that would just be the coolest shit ever if I discovered this world and could study it with the assistance of witches and wizards. Not that I'm formally trained as a scientist, of course, but... I just find the whole concept of such an encounter from a scientific point of view absolutely fascinating to think about. <gasps> Dang, I went on about all that for like, nearly three minutes. Fuck your imprecise first-year level magic, Harry. Yeah, another save book. Hermione would be appalled to see so many books lying around. Well, they're floating, but still. Another tower with no floors. Great. Oh, hell. That was close. 
And he's there. Let's see. Oh, fuck you. Don't come back. Just, uh, I was about to... Yeah, 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 come on. Oh, well, oops, nothing there. Yeah, that bridge goes nowhere anyways. I guess I'm supposed to turn it around somehow. On second thought, I probably don't want to expose myself out here anyways. Yeah, run away, you crusty snot biscuit. Do you think I'm blind? I'm not letting anyone into that tower tonight. Well, you're not blind, but neither is Harry under that cloak for some reason. Hmm, now what? No, oh, of course, I just had to take another step forward. Peeves, you'll be banished for this. That could come in handy if I have to distract Filch along the way. What's Peeves gonna be banished for? Breaking a vase? They do that all the time during class exercises. Just hide beans in there. Okay, will he see me when I cast the spell, though? Ron's brother, Charlie, had arranged to collect the dragon from the tower and return him to Romania. Shit, I forgot he was carrying that thing with him the whole time. And it kept quiet, too. Excellent job, Harry and Norbert. Fucking stupid plan, since it could go wrong so easily, but congratulations nonetheless.